Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 6, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm gonna talk a bit about the present Pacific and Atlantic hurricane seasons, primarily the North Atlantic hurricane season and the Western Pacific hurricane season. Now, the Atlantic hurricane season is presently heating up quite a bit. We have a, a hurricane in the tropical Atlantic, Hurricane Barrel, which is uh, right now considerably to the east of the Windward and Leeward Islands of the Caribbean chain and has formed in the intertropical convergence zone of the near central North Atlantic. And the second system that we have is directly off the US East Coast. It's the remnants of a stalled frontal boundary. And according to the National Hurricane Center, has a 70% chance of form forming into a cyclone within the next 48 hours. And an 80% chance of forming into a tropical cyclone within the next five days. So these are uh, this is a very high probability that this storm will develop at least into a tropical depression, potentially into a tropical storm or a hurricane. Now, I'd just like to note that the formation of barrel here in July in this in this zone is notable. The formation of storms in this zone typically occur during what is known as the Cape Verde season, which usually begins in August and stretches through October, where you have large tropical waves moving off of Africa and into the North Atlantic. And these tropical waves, these large clusters of thunderstorms provide a, a basis for hurricane formation, particularly over the warm summer North Atlantic. So, so the formation of barrel in this zone in July is a bit odd. And we've had some meteorolo meteor meteorologists, meteorological observers talk about this. According to uh, Brian McNoldy, there are only 89 pre-August hurricanes on record. And of them, barrel is the one to form furthest east. And, and by a considerable margin, um, Beryl formed a, let's see, about two weeks ahead of Dorothy, which formed on July 24th. And, and there were a couple that, that formed in this zone in, in January, but that's, that's not during the Cape Verde season. season. So, so this is notable. And, and it's notable not just because of its location, but also because we have large clusters of thunderstorms that are coming off of Africa at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and, and look at the satellite picture to show you what's going on. Now this is today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on Barrel here. So Barrel is not a very large storm, very rather small storm right here in the uh, central North Atlantic in the, in the tropical convergence zone here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull back so you can look at this stream of, of thunderstorms coming off of Africa, this procession of thunderstorms. I'm going to back it off a few frames so you can see this proce procession of thunderstorms coming off of Africa into the North Atlantic and then forming into our hurricane here, Barrel. So, so the monsoon cycle, the thunderstorm cycle is, is strong and, and it's providing fuel for, for the potential formation of these storms. The, the other factor involved, uh, well actually before I talk about that, we do have a, a significant amount of dust streaming off of Africa and, and this tends to suppress hurricane formation, but note that it is presently north of the tropical convergence zone. So if, it's, if it remains to the north, then the suppressing effect of, of dust will, will tend to be less. Although 
though we do have only a rather small storm forming and so the, the dust might be tamping down some of the convection outflow in the northern region so that's just another factor to to keep in mind now there are some climate change related factors i like to talk about one of them is above normal sea surface temperatures off the coast of africa earlier this year we saw some below normal sea surface temperatures but presently the intertropical convergence zone is, is starting to heat up a bit and so we have between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 degrees celsius above normal water temperatures up to around 1.5 degrees celsius above normal now this is somewhat above normal it's it's not substantially above normal but but it, it is enough to to provide storms with a bit of a kick storms tend to run off of africa and then move toward the north and and west toward the united states after they form through the caribbean and into the north atlantic or the gulf of mexico and so i also like to point out that that this region of ocean in the gulf of mexico and off the eastern seaboard is warmer than normal to much warmer than normal and these warmer than normal water temperatures extend into the caribbean as well so so any storm approaching the united states will have considerable amount of fuel uh, due to warm water temperatures and heightened rates of evaporation off the U.S. East Coast and, and Gulf Coasts and in the Caribbean. And this is a climate change related signal. Warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, providing extra fuel for hurricanes is definitely something that we should be concerned about. So, so overall for the North Atlantic, an early start to what would typically be an August beginning to, for the Cape Verde season. And, and that, that's a bit odd. That's, that's something that we might want to keep an eye on in the future. I'd also like to note that in the Pacific, we have a Category 5 hurricane, Super Typhoon Maria. And, and this is a very, very powerful storm. It's tracking off toward China in, in a rough general direction toward China. And according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, uh, the projected track is for the storm to move over some of the islands between Japan and Taiwan and, and track toward Shanghai, the Shanghai region just, just south of Shanghai while maintaining hurricane strength and a rather large wind field. Presently, hurricane force winds are, maximum sustained winds are in the range of just in excess of 155 miles per hour, so barely a category five hurricane, but but still the most, an, an example of the most powerful storms that, that we see forming on the, the surface of the earth. Now, would also like to note that sea surface temperatures in the Pacific are in this region are, are much warmer than normal with the exception of a, of a cooler than normal pool between Japan and, and Taiwan and Maria is going to track through this zone so it might lose a bit of steam as it heads off toward China. Well thank you for joining us that's it for this segment.